Turn your Bibles with us today to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians 2, we've been looking forward to preaching this message. We've been studying at it, looking at it the past several days, planning on preaching it Wednesday, so I had a few more days in the oven that didn't get to have church Wednesday, but we're certainly thankful to, to be back today. Uh, before we get started, we want to open up with a word of prayer. Father, we come before you today, Lord, and we pray, dear God, that, Lord, you just take us in your hand. Lord, use us, God, for your glory. Uh, Lord, we pray that we would all receive of the Spirit, God, what you want us to receive. Lord, we pray that if there's anybody today that is weary with their journey, God, they're downtrodden, Lord, that the Word would lift them up. Father, we pray if there's anybody that is backslidden, Lord, that they would come home. God, if there's anybody that is lost, they would be saved. We ask it in Jesus' name. And amen. Philippians 2, we want to start reading at the fifth verse. The Bible states, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And we will stop reading right there. The things we're going to speak on today might sound like I'm just speaking on social topics of the day, but I promise you the things that you and I see happening in the world today are not social, not cultural, even though they may impact things socially, even though they may impact things culturally, but I promise you today the things that we're going to talk about is uh, more of a spiritual battle than absolutely anything. I thought about this message and I, I thought, you know, I said this, I've said it many times, but I know the time I said it most sincere until today was when COVID first happened, and we was preaching from home and, and broadcasting it on Facebook. The churches was closed. We didn't know a whole lot about it, and what we said was this, and I'm about to say it today, my friend. If you're here today and you're unsaved, you know you need to be saved. God has been calling you. Don't put it off any longer. If you're here today and you're backslidden, Listen to me. Come home. If you're here today and you're saved, start rejoicing because your salvation is drawing nigh. The time is drawing short. Fitting that we sung that song there at the end. Um, I have forgotten some of the scripture. The main part of the scripture that I wanted to focus on today from this was uh, verses 10 and 11. But you know, in that song that Marley wanted to sing, uh, it tells us God has given him a, a name that is above every name. God has highly exalted him, speaking of his son. It tells us here uh, that Jesus, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. We spoke at the nursing home Thursday evening, and in the first chapter of John, uh, it says there that Jesus Christ, which is in the bosom of the Father, uh, he was always there from eternity past, he has always been, but He came forth, the Bible says, as the only begotten Son of God. Came as a man, but when He came to this earth, God wrapped in flesh, He made Himself of no reputation, took on Himself the form of a servant, made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, He humbled Himself. He followed the will and the direction of the Father. He became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, the Word of God says. And because of that, the Word of God says, God has highly exalted him, given him a name which is above every name. I start out this message like that because of this. Uh, this was just going to be what I preached on, or at least what I thought I was going to preach on, until the week unfolded, until we uh, continued studying. Easter Sunday, which is the most important day of the year, the most important day ever of all time, the resurrection of our Savior. Because everything hinges on the resurrection. 
We believe Genesis 1-1 because of the resurrection. We believe that Jesus is coming back because of the resurrection. We know that we have been saved, amen, because of the resurrection. Because when we got saved, we know that He came and to indwell us. We know that He changed us. And so we know the resurrection happened. That's why it's the most important event in all of human history. But on that day, our government and our supposed president declared that it was National Transgender Visibility Day. Now listen to me very carefully in this message. The things I'm going to talk about, I'm not putting a date on the return of our Lord. Because I don't know, no man knows. But I am telling you without question, I believe, I believe if you're here today, you better get right. I believe if you're here today, you better get right. If you think it's a coincidence that this ungodly government that we have in power made this statement on Easter Sunday. If you think that's a coincidence, my friend, listen, I got some Oceanside property out here on the ridge I'd like to sell you for a mighty good price. It's not a coincidence. We are in a, a great state of spiritual war uh, that I think you'll see more and more as this message unfolds. But I want you to understand something today from Philippians chapter 2. <clears throat> the Lord God declares this. He declares that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in the earth, and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. What is that saying? That is saying this. It is saying you have a choice now to bow before Him and be saved. Find out how wonderful He is. Or one day you will just simply bow, but it will be too late. You won't be forced to bow on the day that you see Him. You will bow. It will not be forced. God will not force you down. There won't be angels that will place their hands upon your shoulders and shove you down. At the mere sight of Jesus Christ, you will fall before Him because you will not be able to stand. He is that glorious. He is that wonderful. Listen, I've been following Him now for almost 24 years. There isn't anything else I want in this life. Not anything else in the world. Oh, there's things I enjoy in the world. Don't get me wrong. But listen, if I had to choose between them and Jesus, give me Jesus every day. If I could live a thousand lives on this earth, I'd give every one of them to Jesus Christ. He is absolutely wonderful. Every knee is going to bow. Listen to me. The governments of the world today are more and more ungodly like we've never seen them before. But I promise you this. The president, the kings, the prime ministers, the governors, the congressmen, the senators, whoever, wherever, it doesn't matter, they will all one day bow before Jesus Christ. Now listen, it concerns me for our nation. It excites me and concerns me. My, my emotions in this message are weird. I'm excited, I'm aggravated and sad, all three at the same time. I think our nation really, really, really needs to wake up. Now, I can't preach to the whole nation. All I've got is what's in front of me. And God knew who was going to be here today. Tomorrow, an event is going to take place that I think we ought to open up our eyes to. The Bible tells us this in the book of Genesis and the very first chapter. It says this in Genesis chapter 1, verse 14. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. Now listen. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. I think one thing we have, and we haven't done it purposely, we've done it because we didn't want to be just looking for signs all the time, but we've forgotten that God speaks from the heavens to the earth. The Word of God plainly declares it, not just here, but in other places throughout the Word of God. Now, last week, as I said, our government said that on the resurrection of our Savior, it is Transgender Visibility Day. 
Now, that has been going on for a while, I think since 2009 or 2010. But the government purposely, our government purposely, a government, a nation that has been founded upon the Word of God, upon Christian principles. My friend, if you look back through history, there is no denying that in any way, shape, or form. God has blessed this nation above all other nations, just as He did in the Old Testament with Israel. But make no mistake about it, when Israel got out of line, God sent judgment. Don't think it can't happen to us, Amen. Don't think it can't happen to us. I think tomorrow is, is, is a sign for people to wake up at the very least. You say, well, preacher, why do, you, why do preachers all the time today talk about all, all preachers preach on is transgender and homosexuality? Well, I don't too often. It's been a while since I've mentioned it. But the reason it is brought up, the reason it is brought up in this day and age, it is at the forefront in society. The reason Satan pushes it to the forefront in society is because if you go back to the book of Genesis, the book of Genesis tells us this, first off concerning the institution of marriage that God made, he says, therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife, they too shall be one flesh. That was instituted by God. The Bible says also there in the book of Genesis, in the beginning, he created them male and female. Listen, the things that Satan is doing today is attacking the very foundations of which God has built. That is what he is doing. He is sowing chaos in the world. Sin always brings chaos. Do you know that if you know Jesus... And listen, I'm not saying your life is going to be without problems. I'm not saying that in any way, shape, or form. But listen, the Lord God wants to bring joy and peace into your soul. Happiness into your soul. Holiness into your soul. I tell you, the only thing that Satan will bring is chaos, destruction, ruin, death. That's all he ever brings. That's all he ever brings. And that's what he's sowing in this day and age. So number one, that's why I bring that up. But also... Something that our government has done. If you'll remember messages down throughout the years, I have said this for years. Our nation has progressively uh, become more ungodly, more unbiblical. It was just said uh, by Ron up here leading service. There's 20-year-olds, 30-year-olds. Didn't know what Good Friday was. Didn't know what Easter was. That is insane to think of in our country that has been so blessed by God, where the gospel is so readily available. Did you know, and you probably don't because mainstream news won't spread it, that revival is taking place in other countries of the world. People are getting saved. Our country has been lulled to sleep spiritually. We have been blinded spiritually by ungodliness. And I say all that to say this. I have said for years now, what has kept God's judgment from coming upon our country that he has blessed so mightily. I think there's two things, my friend, and I don't know that uh, one of them is more important than the other, uh, but I can tell you this. I think, number one, there is a large amount of true, born-again, Bible-believing people in this great nation. Yes, I still do believe it is a great nation, with the exception of the government and the ungodliness that goes on. But secondly, listen, because we have supported Israel, the Bible plainly tells us, it says very clearly, I will bless them that bless thee, I will curse them that curse thee. Right. Our president came out just a few days after Transgender Visibility Day and stated these words. He says that Israel does not uh, start a ceasefire on Hamas. He said that we will change our support. Yeah. You can't take that but just one, one way. I mean, there's only two sides there, right? Only two sides. And this is spiritual, and I'll show this here in just a little while why this is spiritual. But he said that. He also said this week that uh, they are possibly going to start marking goods made that is shipped over here from Israel so the people will know that it, it was made in Israel and so they can decide if they want to buy it or not. That's pretty amazing. Pretty amazing to sit back and to think about. Now, I bring up all of that to talk about tomorrow. What is tomorrow? Tomorrow is called the Jonah Eclipse. Jonah Eclipse. Why is that important? What does it mean? Well, I can't tell you 100% what it means. I don't know, and I don't know that anybody really knows. But let me just throw some things out here to you very quickly, because I, I know we, we're, we're short on time. Number one, 
the eclipse is going to go through a path where 11 out of 12 places and towns called Nineveh, the 12th one being in Canada, are going to be in the path of this eclipse. Now, only two of them are going to be in the totality of the eclipse. The totality means the complete darkness. But nonetheless, all of these places are going to be in the path of the eclipse. I've heard people who, I don't know what they're trying to get at. They say they're saved. They say that they're Christians. And they say, well, you know, you're, you're just grasping at straws with this. It's just going over two cities uh, named Nineveh. Well, listen, first off, if it's called the Jonah Eclipse, and secondly, if it just goes over one town named Nineveh, I think we probably ought to pay attention uh, because Nineveh was an ungodly place that God ended up judging. I think we ought to pay attention to that. Does anybody know roughly what time the eclipse is going to take place tomorrow? About three. About three, amen. You know what three o'clock is in the Bible? It's a time of judgment. It's a time of judgment and a time of sacrifice. There, when Elijah took on the false gods, the prophets of Baal, it was roughly three o'clock when he prayed and called down the fire at the time of the evening sacrifice. The Bible tells us in the Gospels, and from the sixth hour unto the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. Jesus cried out, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, that is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Do you know what the ninth hour is? Three o'clock. My friend, we need to wake up. If you're not saved, you need to get saved. If you're backslidden, you need to get yourself right. If you're saved, then like I said at the beginning of the message, listen, start rejoicing, my friends. Because the things that preachers have preached on for years, the things that Christians have wanted to see for years, are taking place right in front of our very eyes. It's so exciting. I'm sad for the law. And I was talking to a fellow yesterday, and, and, and I told him, I said, when the, trumpet, when the trumpet goes, I'm ready. And I told him, I said, don't get me wrong. I said, I love spending time with my wife and kids. I said, I'm ready to go. I want my wife and kids, I want us to all just to go on up together. Amen. Just to go on up together and just be there forever. Just be there forever. Now I want to point out and come back to the whole Israel thing. And I'm, I'm not going to be a lot longer in this message. You won't hear this on mainstream news. We know that the attack there in Israel took place on October 7th. And you will see online and on news outlets that the Palestinians just want their land. They call it their land. It was never their land, but I'm not going to get into all that right now. But you'll see on comments, people say free Palestine. Just as I said, what our government and what society is pushing in our country, it, it is more spiritual than it is cultural and social. What's happening in Israel today is more spiritual than it is so social or cultural. You say, what do you mean? <clears throat> a spokesperson for Hamas said one of the main reasons for the attack on October said, well, let me first ask you this. How many of us here know what the sacrifice of the red heifer is? People know what that is? The sacrifice of the red heifer has to be done so that the other sacrifices can can start. And we know that the book of Revelation tells us that there's going to be another temple. The Jews eventually are going to start sacrificing again. The Antichrist is going to make a peace treaty with them. But in about three and a half years, he's going to say, now nah, I changed my mind. And he's going to set himself up in the temple as he, as he is God. But you see, before they can do that, the sacrifice of the red heifer must be made. A spokesperson for Hamas said, and you've got to dig to find this, but I promise you it's there. You won't hear it on Fox. You won't hear it on CNN. You won't hear it on any of the mainstream pages. They said one of the main reasons for the attacks was they wanted to kill those red heifers that are over there right now. A farmer in Texas shipped five red heifers over to Israel. And they have been examining them now for quite a while. If, if I'm not mistaken, there was five. One of them has already been disqualified. You see, for it to be a, a red heifer without blemish, and we're going to read from Numbers 19 in just a moment, I, it can't even have two hairs on it that are different than the red that it's supposed to have. It, it immediately becomes 
disqualified, no blemishes, nothing like that. Now you say, well, preacher, that's Old Testament stuff. Why are you talking about Old Testament stuff? We live in the day of Jesus. Hang on, we'll tie it all together before we come to a close. The Bible says in Numbers 19, I will read the first six verses. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, This is the ordinance of the law which the Lord hath commanded, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they bring thee a red heifer without spot, wherein is no blemish and a point which never came yoke. And you shall give her unto Eleazar the priest, that he may bring her forth without the camp. And one shall slay her before his face. And Eleazar the priest shall take of her blood with his finger, and sprinkle of her blood directly before the tabernacle of the congregation seven times. One shall burn the heifer in his sight, her skin and her flesh and her blood, and with her dung shall he burn. Now listen to this sixth verse. And the priest shall take cedar wood, and hyssop and scarlet, and cast it into the midst of the burning of the heifer. Listen, that sixth verse, without question, so does the other verses, but that sixth verse is a direct uh, shadowing of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, Satan is fighting the gospel today. He is fighting the gospel today. You say, how is that a shadowing? How is that a shadow or a type of the Lord Jesus Christ? Notice what it says. It says that he will take the cedar wood, hyssop, and scarlet, and cast it into the midst of the fire. Hamas wanted to kill those red heifers. They didn't want that sacrifice going well. Who controls Hamas? Satan. That's just the only way to put it. There's no point in trying to be politically correct and saying, well, they're just another religion. Listen, anything apart that denies Jesus Christ as Lord is a false religion. It is a false god. It is Antichrist, the Bible says. There is no other way around it. The Bible says that they take the cedar. Uh, many people believe that if not all, at least a portion of the cross, that the when the Romans made the crosses, it was made of cedar wood. The Bible tells us that they took the hyssop in there to burn it as well. The Bible tells us that, that Jesus said, I thirst. And what did they do? They took the vinegar, put it on a sponge and hyssop, and lifted it up to him to drink. The Bible says here that they took the scarlet. What did they do? What did the soldiers do? So they took a scarlet robe and placed it upon him, didn't they? Listen, my friends. I Hopefully you're getting what I'm putting down. It's all a spiritual battle. It's all a spiritual battle. Satan is trying to thwart, to overturn, to ruin people's lives. Jesus Christ said, The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But he said this, I have come, that you might have life, and that you might have it more abundantly. That life that Jesus speaks of as I come to a close, is not necessarily a life of material ease. It's not a, a, a life... Where you're promised always good health. But it is a life within the soul. A peace within the soul. Knowing you are saved. Knowing that one day everything is gone. I heard a preacher say this once. And I, I don't necessarily like the way he said He said if Jesus rose from the dead. And I know what he's saying there. I like to say this. Since Jesus rose from the dead. Whatever happens. Since he rose from the dead. Ultimately. Everything's going to be okay. I mean, whatever happens to me, whatever sickness befalls me, whatever tragedy takes place, because Jesus rose from the dead, ultimately everything's going to be okay, my friend. Everything's going to be okay. I don't know where you stand today, but if you need to make things right, make things right with the Lord.